don't put that on there. I don't want to be on it. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Pen, should we get them inside? On, Chester. Pen, Chester. Welcome back, everyone. We are here at the Chesters today because they have started lambing. And there's something I want to show you. It's a cool piece of kit. Before we get going, I thought I'd update you on something. Chester, come on. So some of you will remember that Penny had puppies last summer. There she is. She's got her figure back. But who's this? So that, he's got slightly darker features there. This is Chester. So Chester is one of the eight puppies she had. He actually went to a lovely family in North Yorkshire, but unfortunately the mum developed a pretty severe allergic reaction to dogs. So unfortunately he had to come home, but he settled in nicely. As I said, his name is Chester from the Chesters. So it does work out pretty well. Where's he gone? Chester? Chester? So, Penny gets to see one of her babies all the time. No dogs in the lambing shed, but I thought you guys would like to see that. So hats, nice gear. <laughs> <laughs> but that is enough dog stuff this isn't a small animal veterinary channel you guys are here for the farm side of things and that is what i'm going to show you so you guys know that me just like all farm vets bang on about colostrum and how important that is at lamy and calving times it is the most important thing so anything that encourages or makes easier a good colostrum protocol makes me very excited and this is one such thing. But before I show you that, I think Ollie's gonna take some lambs out. So that's always nice to do. It's always nice to see lambs going out on a nice spring day like this. So we'll go out and join him to do that. I've had these muck boots for, uh, I don't know, eight years? And they have done me very well. They're my backup ones now because they cracked and went not so waterproof. But I feel like this might be their last lambing because they're just gonna, they're just gonna become slippers, I think. So it's a shame, but they certainly don't owe me anything. I'm also wearing some trousers that uh, Cammy from the Sheep Game gave me. There's these Heinegger ones, because of course he is Mr. Heinegger. Um, yeah, they're pretty good. They're a bit, I think, I might have overdone it this winter, so they're ever so slightly sort of snug, but that might just be my massive quads. Got a bit of, bit of uh, give about them. I still do my lunges. Ah, uh, oh, that is a bit tight actually. Wow. Anyway, hopefully not need to do too much dancing on farm. So I've just realized I had my speaker in my pocket. I was filming all of that. All I'll say is you can see how when Ollie was putting them out, they were going out in pairs of lambs that matched the ewe. So the idea was you get much less missed mothering. So that's where lambs and ewes get confused as to who's who. They pretty much know who their lambs are now, but if you boot them all out in one go, 
it can become a bit of a frenzy and lambs can get confused. They can get mismothered, right? And that can really negatively impact their chances of survival. Um, so just taking the extra five, 10 minutes, which is what the vast majority of our farmers do to make sure that everyone's well mothered up. You see there, there's some really nice sort of pairs just, just with each other. There was a little bit of confusion there before between the purple dots and the yellow dots. Lambs getting a bit confused as to who their mum was. But yeah, nicely spaced out and you can see it's one single there, but all of those are nicely mothered up. It's a set of twins there trying to get confused now, but they should be well acquainted with their new digs. So, I'm not hold Ollie up and we'll get going. I'll get the gate. It's like being a student. Probably would have been fine leaving this open, but the A1 is just at the bottom of that hill. So probably not a great idea, just in case. Magic. Ugh. So Ollie was just showing me his, uh, his high-tech recording system. So it's this and you've got what ewes turned out, lambs turned out where they go. But just saying that's a really good example of something really simple. So Ollie from that has, he already has his number of lambs scanned. And from there, you can work out how many lambs are turned out. And so that difference, the deficit, there's always gonna be a few fewer turned out than a scanned. Scan's a maximum you can have. You can work out how many might have been lost in that first 24, 48 hours, which is a really big risk time for any lamb, whether they're born indoors or outdoors. So, so even pen and paper has a really useful part to play. <laughs> <laughs> You guys who saw the lambing vlogs from last year will remember that Hattie is always here at lambing time. And she's doing what she does at home normally actually, which is putting some fresh sheets down. She doesn't let me do that job. Now we've been out with Ollie and turned some lambs out, or using lambs out, we're going to show you this little widget, this little gadget, if I can help. I've just noticed that Hatley and Emma, the vet student over there, are matching. <laughs> Virtually matching, anyway. Nearly got the same headband, got the same jacket. Is that a standard issue? It's the uniform. Jordan and David at the back there, also putting fresh sheets out for the, for the big pens. There's one lambing there, anyway. Oh, do you want me to do that now? Yes, yeah, we demonstrate. So, this thing, Fat Hats, do you mind passing it to me there? So. In fact, do you want to explain what no, it is? <laughs> so this is the utterly easy hand milker. So you can see that there. It's probably fa fairly self-explanatory what it does, but it's got this little vacuum that sits on top of there, or you put the teat within it and it milks it into that little receptacle there. So it saves a lot of hand ache from having to do that to use. It's probably a bit more comfortable for them as well, I imagine. So I'm gonna hand it over to the seasoned user of it, Harriet. Ollie's breast pump. Ollie's breast pump, we're also <laughs> calling it. Not because you can milk Ollie with it, but because, <laughs> because it was Ollie's idea. In fact, we need to catch up with him because I'll explain why it's such a good innovation in a second, as well as the fact it makes things easier and cleaner. Because remember, you get a load of crud and crap in with your colostrum, it really, knocks the quality of it as well. She was nicknamed Bertha. Pardon? She was nicknamed Bertha. Bertha. Bertha Big Tits. Bertha. She's <laughs> absolutely full on this side. Oh, shit. Yeah, like engorged. Engorged, that's a great word, Hats. Check the dictionary for that. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I do need to build, oh look at that. So you need to build up a bit of pressure on it first. There we go. Look at that. Well done, girl. Very good. 
So you see how that keeps it nice and clean because you're not getting straw and all sorts of things into it. So he's wanting it already. Look at that. And where's that made? Is it Aus uh, Aus USA. USA? Nice, nice. So Hats, what do you think about that machine? <laughs> Would you use that on your ladies? It is a breast pump, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, that's a fantastic Vita kit. But the great thing about something like that is where you're getting more and more colostrum use and keeping it clean, is that I'll let David go past. You're on candid camera, David. What I was saying was the great thing about that is it's anything that encourages farm, you know, makes it easier for farmers to get colostrum into lambs. It's fantastic. That's partly because colostrum is the most important thing you can give lambs at this stage, especially in an indoor setting like this. So traditionally, where lambs haven't got enough colostrum, the answer would have been to give them a tiny bit of antibiotic, so an oral antibiotic like Spectam or an injectable antibiotic, some sort of penicillin normally. That's come under a bit of pressure, trying to reduce antibiotic use in farming. It's a perfectly sensible thing to do. The way to get around that, of course, is to keep things really clean and dry, just like this, and also make sure lambs and calves are getting heaps and heaps and heaps of colostrum. So basically, keeping the lambing area, both the big pens and the little pens like this, really nice and dry and clean, getting navels treated something like strong iodine, and then also getting colostrum into them, that's how you stop those things. And antibiotics, as great as they are, they do stop working those bacteria, those bugs, eventually develop resistance. So forgetting the public health side of things, forgetting the importance of those antibiotics to human health, it's still really, really important that we develop and wean ourselves off that. Don't get me wrong, in every lambing show, there's probably gonna be some lambs that would benefit from an antibiotic treatment, but it's a small fraction of the entire lambs there are. So perhaps weak triplets, Anything that's born to a ewe with really poor body condition, perhaps those that are born to gimmers sometimes, uh, or anything that's had a really hard pull. But if you're a farmer watching this, I'm sure you've already thought about this. If you haven't, go and talk to your vet. But something like that milk pump is a really nice way just to make it easy for you uh, at three in the morning when you'd rather be in bed. Makes it quicker, cleaner, gets colostrum into that lamb. And that's fantastic. These guys here have made really good improvements in the last, even just the last couple of years. So we'll talk to Ollie about the specifics, but basically they've, they've reduced the volume of antibiotics they're using vastly. Uh, I'll ask Ollie about it, but he's just about to rub a lamb on with Emma there. So wait until he's done that. It's all systems go here, all systems go. Yes, Emma's wearing a glove, fantastic. Got two time. <laughs> Keep the hold up. Oh, I'm there, Kaz. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, man, come back. Sprite, anyway. There we go. So, you might have seen Hatley and I do one of these last year. Got Emma from Glasgow Uni. I'm just putting her off while she's at the, at the vital bit. This is a single. Looks like a big Suffolk. But Ollie's got a lamb here to rub on, and we're using the patented Ollie Scott rub on tray, which you can get from any garden centre. <laughs> well done, Emmett. Look at that, pro. That's it. Wonderful, well done. So, that tray, like we said last year, just collects all those juices. All that amniotic fluid, which is where the smell of her own lamb comes from. And so we can trick her into thinking that that's her own lamb. You can always get some good stuff off the legs and the tail as well, don't you? We've just got to keep that little lamb down. Steady, steady. Is he okay? Big Suffolk. All right, there you go. That's a fantastic tray for that job. <laughs> and then a turn around. Just get some on the... Um... It might look a bit excessive, but if you're going to do it, you only really get one shot. So it is really worth getting as much on as you can. 
That's why this tray is so good because it stops all that fluid going into the into the straw. It means you can get it on the lamb. Look at that. Tremendous. So we'll put them, well Ollie will put them in front of her. So the lamb's a bit confused, but she seems to like it. Is it a gimmer or is it just a small U? Small U. Small U. Small U, just a Charolais. Well, I suppose we've got some other Charolais cross out of meal. Yeah. Are bloody massive. <laughs> yeah, there are, aren't they? So Ollie, this is a good chance. That milker we were talking about earlier, yeah. I was just saying how brilliant it is to keep the colostrum nice and clean and make it a lot easier. And one of the best things about that from a veterinary point of view is, um, it is reducing antibiotic use. So like a few years ago, would it be right in saying like most of the lambs in the shed would get some sort of antibiotic? Most, most of the lambs would receive some ultra pen. Yeah, so it's a penicillin. Yeah, um, so not long acting and triplets and anything that looked a little bit weaker, a little bit slower to get up, we'd get some Spectam. Spectam, so that's that oral antibiotic that's just come off the market, but um, you've managed, like last year, made a change to that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah last, last year we reduced it down to just the triplets getting some uh, Ultra Pen mm -hmm. and Spectam, and then this year I've just decided to cut it out completely. Yeah, and that's, and, and what, what's, like, so like last year, I don't think there was any more joint ill, only more watery mouth, was there? No, I don't think so. No. no? And what do you reckon, you, what are you putting that down to? Uh, do you reckon? The of the individual mother in boxes. Yeah. So, so you've got a few there, like up, oh, the parrots up there, yeah? Yeah, so just making sure every, every, every box has got a layer of lime mm, yeah. on top of the concrete first, and then some wood shavings this year, which we've just oh, yeah. introduced, and some straw, some clean straw, and then after every use been in, come out, we'll put another dusting of lime down yeah. and some more shavings. So each all. one that goes in gets like a fresh yeah. set of bedding and a fresh set of lime. Yeah, that's it. And then sort of once the user a bit a bit higher in the boxes, we'll just muck them out. Muck them out. Yeah. Nice. And that like you said, like the proofs in the pudding and we not you know, not had touch wood, mm -hmm. not had any more joint ill I mean very little. I think you had one or two joint ills last year, yeah, if that just yeah, so it shows you, I mean, people are always a bit worried about coming off products like Spectam or Ultra Pen or something, but as long as you get the basics right, which everyone can do, it's, uh, it's not, a, not a worry, is it? No, not at all. Right, we'll leave her to this. She seems to love those two. So we'll leave her to it. Fantastic, man. <laughs> I'm not sure I've recorded that last bit, so I'll just point out that little lamb. Diddy lamb, uh -huh. he's feeding as one of a pair. So there's his mate, that's mum. Now mum was a little bit unwell, I think possibly spat these lambs out a bit early, hence their size. She's a little bit lean, had a bit of a smelly rear end. So potentially a metritis, a uterine infection. Um, so not the best of start, saying that the lambs are very bright for all their, for all their tiny. Um, mum, got a few meds just to help her along with any potential infection and the lambs as you can see are getting some extras so although not the best start they seem touchwood to be doing pretty well so yeah nothing mind-blowing just keeping things clean keeping things fed and things seem to be going pretty well at the scots lambing shed scots empire one of the reasons I really enjoyed lambing as a student was because it's one of the few times of the year when farms have a lot of people working on them. You know, a, a bit of a team and a bit of camaraderie. Yeah, sometimes, or a lot of the time, farmers seem to work in isolation. It's just quite nice. I think they appreciated, at least where I went, a vet student coming along, extra pair of hands, dare I say, even a little bit of banter. Perhaps not great caliber banter for me, but it's pretty slim pickings out here in rural Northumberland. If you're a student, if you're looking to get involved with agriculture in any way, I'd say going and helping in a lambing shed is possibly one of the best places to start. Because there's always something for you to do. But there's heaps going on. There's another one lambing in there. Ollie and Emma are looking like they're gonna lamb another one in there. Hatley's carrying on feeding. David and Jordan are bedding up. <laughs> and I've contributed absolutely zero uh, while I've been filming this vlog. So 
I am going to get out of the way, but hopefully you enjoyed that. No, you're not, you're going to see a lamb. Oh, I've got to see a lamb. You're right, where's the lamb? Okay, sorry, I'm wrong. That's one more thing. We've got to go and have a look at a lamb with a gammy eye. And that is the technical term before you ask. You have me? So, so, before, I might as well do something useful before I go. Everyone else is working. And you see this lamb has a degree of entropion. And we've done a video on that before. So that lower eyelid is just rolling in on his eye, irritating it and making it weepy and sore. And that'd be really uncomfortable for him. So... I'm going to put a bleb of penicillin in that lower eyelid to raise it off. So Hats is going to hold him there. He's not going to like this. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. So, you can see in there, we've injected a bleb of penicillin that's lifted that lower eyelid off his eye and should make him a lot more comfortable. It looks horrendous because now he's got a big fat eye, but it's lifted that lower eyelid off. It's Sorry, it's actually a girl. It's lifted her lower eyelid off, uh, stop that rubbing. So, although it's not very cosmetic, um, it should do the trick. And that lamb should grow out of that. If you're thinking about how you're going to stop that happening in the future, then it tends to be hereditary, so it tends to be certain tups, although not always. We did a bit of a technical video on this this time last year, so I'll link to that in the video description. But hopefully that's that lamy a bit more comfortable. So there's one last thing. Hopefully you can hear me over the sheep and over the quad and all of that. It's one last thing I thought you guys might be quite interested to see. You might have seen one of these before, but maybe not quite known what it is. Maybe you do, maybe I'm being patronising, but I'll have a look. So this you has had a set of twins, but you can see, oh, it's on the other side. <laughs> so this you's had a set of twins, uh, and she had them all by herself, but you can see something's gone a bit awry here. So you can see that. There's a rudder. This shouldn't be there, and this is sort of all very fluidy. But what that will be is, thanks, Emmett. What that will be is a pre-pubic tendon rupture. That's where the abdominal muscles, essentially, with their attachment to the pelvis, gives way. Often, those are having triplets or quads, so you can imagine it's greater pressure there. She's just had a set of sensible-sized twins. So it's probably just a congenital weakness, but she's doing absolutely fine. They tend to do pretty well. Rule of thumb is don't send them back to the tup because you can imagine if they've broken that tendon, they can develop less force on their abdominal muscles, potentially making them less able to squeeze lambs out the next time. So for her, this will probably be her last set of lambs, but she should do them absolutely fine. That's enough getting in the way for me. I hope you enjoyed that. Just a few things, cutting about the lambing shed, making a nuisance of myself, as I said. If you like that, don't be afraid to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it, give the video a thumbs up, and leave me a comment. I'll see you next week.